and I see this car coming right in my face. Now here's the moment. Here's the moment of truth, bro. Am I gonna be a man about this and take my own car to my head? Or do I matrix dodge the fuck out of it? Fuck, I drank coffee, bro. I'm losing oh, my fucking I mind. And you're vlogging too. I can tell a noticeable difference. Your mind is just like, do, 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 what do you do, see? Do. You know, so you can it's tell gone. when I'm a, a vlogger For versus sure. just, uh, really? Yeah, when you're not vlogging, you're just like, I know, bro. It's kind of crazy. Vlogging like, um, vlogging like wakes me up. It ignites that like kid in me who just wants to like fuck around and be high energy all the time. Mm. Can you hey. shut the fuck up? Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. All great things. Everything's going great in quarantine. So far, so good. Besides the fact that I'm losing my fucking mind. Got a lot of fun things planned for this podcast. We got Spencer Taylor. He's back. I'm back there. For for, for, for what? Like five hours? Or, or yeah, just a couple hours. I, I, want, I want to talk about that. Yep. Mac is here. Hey. Mac the Pilgrim. Yep. And Still then a um, Mike. Wait. Hold on a second. Yeah, what happened? Where's uh, where's Mike at? Mike is, this is this is, what's it been like? Once 170 podcasts he's made, and then all of a sudden he's, uh, um, I'm gonna leave that up to you guys to speculate. So listen, a lot, there's a lot of things happening, mainly just all revolving around the coronavirus, and we have a doctor that I'm gonna try to uh, zoom. I'm gonna try to zoom. His, I'm going to try to Zoom him in. <laughs> I'm used to saying like Skype or FaceTime, but this Zoom thing is like new technology. You know, I'm a millennial, so technically I should get it. But Hopefully we don't get hacked. Have you been hearing about this? What happens? People are getting hacked on Zoom. I was reading about some guy who was giving a presentation to back his degree. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it, somebody started drawing a dick. Well, all the professors were watching his presentation. I'm not you didn't so hear about this? I'm not so mad at that. This could happen. I'm I'm down to get a well, he a, did a, that. a dick hack on my on my That probably was you. Face. Yeah. It was me that drew yeah. that. Yeah. 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 All right. So, uh <clears throat> who's the doctor we're going to talk to? He's actually my doctor, but he is one of the best in Los Angeles. Like every single mm-hmm. one of your favorite singers or uh pieces of talent in LA has gone to him to fix their vocal cords. Oh, wow. He is the guy. His name is Dr. Sean Nasiri. He practices in Be- Beverly Hills and he specializes in voice and sinus disorders and uh, he actually sent me this i asked him to send me his credentials and uh his title he, and he told me to say he has pretty good medical training <laughs> okay, <laughs> seems good. legit but, but he, he legit. he's hilarious he's a hoot but he's also one of the smartest people that i know and he's an amazing doctor so i'm gonna ring him on the horn right now and hopefully he's gonna tell us how to not die from uh, covid19 there you go yes we got oh, you here we hear go. you loud and clear doc all right Anthem. how you doing so far, so good. Just trying to stay alive. I was hoping you could help us do that. We're doing our best. Are you still Are you still practicing or are you uh, social distancing yourself? So what we're doing is we're still seeing people. We're not seeing anybody who's sick, has a fever, has any kind of cough, shortness of breath to minimize everyone's exposure because we don't want sick people coming into the medical buildings because we're in a building with you know, a lot of patients who are immune suppressed. We want to minimize everyone's exposure and we're trying to limit any other activity that would expose anybody. So the majority of what we're doing is virtual consults and then seeing how we are. But isn't part of the danger of this disease is the is the two week, it's like almost silent, quiet in- incubation period. Like how, how do you know that even though they may not be exhibiting symptoms that they have it? Well, here's the issue is that they've done studies as far back as two, three months ago in China, and they were seeing that people who were exposed didn't necessarily even know they were exposed. Before they were symptomatic, there's an average, it's, it's what's called an asymptotic curve. So the first few days, very few people. Between day five and day 10, a lot of people. Hmm. And after day 10 or 11, very few people actually convert to positive. So that first four or five days before anyone's really that symptomatic, what they're finding is that there are about one in 20 people who aren't really symptomatic, who don't know they've been exposed, who are potentially contagious. Got it. So about one in 20 are contagious without realizing it until they suddenly hit that fifth day and suddenly they have fever, chills, shortness of breath, Mm. the terrible body aches. What we've seen a lot of are people who come in and they can't smell or taste all of a sudden. 
and they've always had a great sense of smell or taste. And the issue is suddenly, wait, we see this like unexplained once or twice a year. And I see this about a hundred times a year because I'm an expert in smell and taste. Yeah. And in the last two months, I've seen 20 cases of it. I've spoken to my colleagues. I've looked at the literature from France, Germany, England, Iran, and China. And one in five people has coronavirus. They manifest because they can't smell or taste. So suddenly they can't smell what they're cooking. They can't smell natural gas. Wow. They can't smell you know, grill. They can't smell a diaper, which is it's a it's a big symptom to know about because if you have that and a terrible headache and infection right now, there's a very good chance you've got the coronavirus. Wow. Okay, I have a headache, but it's because I flipped a uh, flipped a doom buggy this morning. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's probably actually irrelevant. I'll ask you the next question. Doc, uh, what are some long-term uh, repercussions of this virus? Well, I hate to say it, but it's going to be another 12 or 18 months of this process. <gasps> what? We're, seeing, we're just coming out of winter, and we're just coming out of the surge. So our curve, if you've seen any of the CDC projections for it, where they're like, if everyone just goes out, does their normal thing, we're going to see this many spikes and then it's gonna come down quickly. We're flattening the curve, because the problem is the higher the peak, the fewer people are able to see you in the emergency room, keep you in the hospital, because we're running out of hospital beds within the next four weeks, running out of intensive care units, and then in intensive care units, we're running out of ventilators and respirators, and then any of the provisional medicines we have, they're also in short supply because of supply chain issues in terms of limited availability all up front, you wanna see that if we can flatten that curve, we can hopefully get the best treatment of, to the most number of people. I wanted to ask how effective the masks are, because I read somewhere that the CDC right. is uh, advising all Americans to wear masks. Are they actually doing anything? Or is it just a look yeah. like Burning Man? Absolutely. I mean, look, if you go into a room and there are 10 people in that room, and let's say a 10 by 20 room, one person coughs. If you cough or sneeze, like you just yawn, mm -hmm. you generate respiratory droplets, which are sneeze, cough, and those come out of you at 30 to 50 miles an hour. Ooh. So most of those particles, if you're talking to somebody and they have food in their mouth and they're speaking, like those particles will mostly dissipate within one to three feet, but then out about five or six feet, 90, 95% of those particles are gone. But you also have aerosols. So when you cough, those very small, fine particles that come out, hmm. they can go five to 50 feet reliably and be in the air, kind of hang in the air, especially when it's colder, for up to three hours, according to the CDC. Oh, my God. So if you're wearing a mask and you sneeze, right, you wear any kind of homemade mask made out of cotton, made out of, like, kitchen towel that's clean, made out of T-shirt material. Yep. You're going to catch the vast majority of it basically better than holding your hand in front of your mouth. I got a, I got a personal question. Yes, sir. Are you prepared for doomsday? This in our eyes is doomsday. In the next two weeks in California, we're going to hit that very high surge and peak that we're expecting. And everybody has to do their part. The most important part for your folks, and thank you for talking to me because we're going to get through this. Most of, our, most of us are going to get through this, but we're going to say, what, what, what else could we have done? What could we have done better to protect the person to my left, the person to my right, my parents, my grandparents, my friend who's recovering from cancer chemotherapy? Mm. So number one, please stay at home. Stay at home. Stay at home. It makes a huge difference. Hey, Doc, what's the, uh, what's the recovery like for the people that have beaten coronavirus? So it's interesting. I've had people where for three weeks, they're dragging on the ground and they're really sick and exhausted, having a hard time breathing, like feeling like an elephant on their chest. Mm -hmm. Then I've had people where they just had terrible bus muscle and body aches for a day or two, lost their sense of smell for like five or 10 days, and then pretty much have been back to normal because there's a wide variation in how people are manifesting this virus. Whether it was weaponized by nature or whoever, this is a virus that's a lot more efficient and again, the attack rate, given the exposure, it's not like the flu where if you have two people in a household, one person has the flu, 
the next person next to them, their spouse, their child, has about a 20% chance or a one out of five chance of getting the flu. With this, we're seeing if there are five people in a household, three or four of them are getting this mm -hmm. coronavirus. Whoa. From more than a casual exposure. And a casual exposure is I'm six feet away for 15 or 20 minutes and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm sitting in an exam room across from someone three feet apart, again, without a mask, which at this point would be foolish, yeah. and getting them to cough in my face. That's a real exposure at home because anyone who has kids knows when your kids are sick, they're stuck to you. They're sneezing on you. They're snotting on your leg. There's going to be stuff on your clothes because that's what parenting is. Hmm. Same in that this virus is far higher in terms of its successful attack rate. What's the end game here, Doc? Like, are we... It is it, will there be some sort of vaccine hopefully, or like how do we really truly get out of this so we can continue living our normal lives? So, so the good news is there are several treatments that show a lot of promise. Number one, we have Zithromax and hydroxychloroquine. If you're in the hospital being monitored for liver function, then you can have that and it should improve your chances. There've been three good studies, a lot more coming to show whether or not it actually does any help. Okay. We have remdesivir, a really good antiviral that was used for Ebola that's in trials right now. And trials mean we have really sick people. We're putting them on it and we're trying to see group A that got it, group B that didn't get it for whatever reason, who is actually doing better. Because mm. these are all medicines with significant side effects. We have Coletra, which is one of the AIDS drugs that's two different antiretrovirals because the virus doesn't have its own DNA. It's an RNA virus. It has to use cellular infrastructure to use so it uses your own cells machinery once it enters the cell hi hijacks it to produce itself we can modify it there we can modify those hormone mediators called interleukins which are hormones in your immune system to tell other cells white blood cells need help and they want to attack and kill mm. and those are what go crazy when someone's lungs fill up with fluid or they get a lot of inflammation and then ultimately the plan is the vaccine which again, unless there's been a lot of mutation in the virus, you're going to see a huge dip in virus numbers in 12 to 18 months when we get the vaccine. But remember with all respiratory cold viruses and coronaviruses about one in every cold, one in every eight colds in America every year. So if you're seeing that, and we're seeing this huge spike of several million people who are getting infected. And in countries like England, where they didn't socially isolate or distance nearly as quickly, hmm. Epidemiologists are expecting that out of every 10 people, eight of them will be infected within the next three months. Wow. Oh my so God. you haven't seen too much mutation, the vaccine, which will come out already being tested, will be out in the next 12 to 18 months because they don't just test it. They have to scale it up and produce 100 million doses for wow. the United States alone. Oh, oh my God. To see that it's safe. It's about 12 <laughs> to 18 months out. We're so far. So, Doc, do you think there's grounds here to maybe, let's say, ban some of these wet markets in China? Or do you think there's anything that we can do moving forward to like clamp down and say, yo, enough is enough? Because we know that's right. where it came from and it's ridiculous. How wet is the market? Uh, apparently, it's pretty wet. Okay. Right. So these are markets where instead of having everything on ice, they have blocks of ice as it drips and dissolves. Because I've seen two different models where it was some form of armadillo that was in cages underneath bats. And this is a virus where they killed bats, hung them upside down. And as their like secretions fell down on this ocelot or armadillo type of animal, and they're thinking that interaction of the two different animals created a super virus or weaponized by mother nature or whomever you believe. Right. Those well, types of markets where you're eating animals that are considered exotic, we definitely physiologically, biologically, those are very risky foods to eat at baseline. So as of the last week, China has actually banned the eating of cats and dogs. Oh, well, that's yeah. that's yeah. that's cool. I mean, it seems like common well, sense, right. but uh, good good I'm stuff. I'm also semi disappointed. I, I have been like kind of looking forward to eating an armadillo bat. Uh uh. So now I can't. <laughs> no, right? no, sit that play no, out. An armadillo and a bat. Oh, so it's not one animal. <laughs> no, they were they were hanging bats in the wet market above these armadillo animals. Right. Yeah. And that's what actually they think 
upgraded the super bug. Bro, why? Well, I've, who's I'll, trying to eat armadillo, bro? I mean, quite a few people. Armadillo, bro? Yeah. I mean, that's why, like, I think we need to do something to get them to stop doing this. And, oh, like, so, they oh, can't. So, oh, so you're going after China. You, you're trying to go straight to Wuhan. Well, let's do it. No, uh, no, not me, no, 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 no. We're not no, going no. there. They, they've already started to regulate out the wet markets, and they're already trying to really limit it because in many ways they're considered black markets. They're actually not quite allowed legally, hmm. and they're really trying to do a better job of policing it because for China, this think of what economic impact we've had in the last three weeks here. They've had that impact since December, and it's <laughs> wow. affected their economy. <laughs> And just to paint an even rosier picture, 80% of our medications in the United States are produced in China. Yeah. The masks we use in the hospital, the N95s protecting us, 90% are produced in China. The raw materials for making those masks, from China. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is horrifying. The we use for testing for coronavirus, the reagents, all the chemicals and the, and the liquids we use to test for coronavirus, guess where they're made? If I had to guess, uh, right, anyone? it would be China. Probably China. Good guess. Right. China. The, the oh. tiny silver lining in this, <laughs> the test swabs, the test swabs like this that are called Dacron, that are plastic swabs that we swab with, they're made in Italy. Oh, Italy. Yeah, good, stuff. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> uh, so basically uh, we're fucked. All right. All right so, so what's your intuition telling you? Is this a, is this a man-made disease? Did the cabal do this? Is this what, what is conspiracies this are true? warfare? I mean, it's just very strange that the same region that gave us SARS back in 2003, where a few thousand people died. And SARS, the attack rate was you had 10 people with SARS, it usually killed at least four. Unless they were 20 year old healthy people like yourself, yeah. without a susceptibility, the kill rate was 40 or 50% in some areas. So, isn't it very strange that we have? 1.1 million cases, 330,000 cases, I think, as of this morning in the United States alone for something that's 20 to 50 times more lethal than the flu is far more transmissible than the flu. That's just very curious. Yeah. And also, uh, I, I don't remember how exact how exact the distance was, but very close to the wet market, there was the facility in which they tested for COVID-19. Did you see that in Wuhan? Yeah. Oh, now, yeah. now, now y'all are getting a conspiracy. Have you heard about this? I don't want to hear about it, bro. Already... There's a testing lab that, like, I'm pretty sure Bill Gates was heavily invested in you, that's so relatively me close. Bill Gates planted the armadillos under the bats to start the coronavirus? Yeah. Uh, You're out of your fucking mind. I'm just saying. <laughs> Stay woke. That one, I honestly can't speak to, but it is very curious. Yeah. I, very curious. Because remember, there was SARS, there's MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. And that was from another coronavirus in the Middle East, again, right around after the second desert storm. And it was very curious. Well, don't, they're calling it the novel COVID-19. <laughs> Does it, doesn't that mean it's lab made? It, it certainly raises eyebrows. Wow. Mm. This is, I'm, I'm all against this being just a natural occurrence. I think there's something deeper going on here. I'll, I'll say it. Well, I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it. Of my get this podcast let's do it all right doc thank you for joining us man you gave us some uh some probably the most actually useful information we've ever heard on this podcast yeah that was great <laughs> because it's literally life-saving right please 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 keep doing your part you're doing a great job your folks and the reason i want to talk to you was that your folks really listen yeah and even though they don't have that many friends who've had it thus far there are lots of young people who are in danger your parents your grandparents your families Please keep doing your part. Please wear a mask when you go out. Please limit going out to very important, crucial things. Mm -hmm. And every person has a slightly different definition. There's several governors who still haven't, you know, proclaimed a state of emergency despite a lot of risks. Please protect your kids, protect your families, and keep doing your part. We're going to get through this. We just want to make sure as many of us get through this as possible. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All yeah. right. Thank you, Doc. Thanks, Doc. I'll all talk right. to you soon, all right? Love all you. Right. Take care. All right. Bye. You guys. Peace. <sighs> End meeting. See, first time on a Zoom call. Yeah, no dicks were drawn. That's good. No, no, no hacks. That honestly was probably the most useful information we've ever had on this podcast. How do you feel? Um, 
he kind of just confirmed everything I thought. Like people are asking me, I don't know why they're asking me, but like how long I think it's going to last. And I've been saying, I don't see how something that has had this strong of an effect and ripple effect across the globe could just go away. I don't understand how the quarantine will end by the end yeah. of April, May. That, that doesn't seem realistic to me if it's as deadly as he's saying. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm definitely going to make a uh, more of an effort to wear a mask. I'll tell you yeah. that. I'll tell mm-hmm. you that. I, I thought that was a kind of just a, a farce. Same. Well, it, what's so confusing about this is, is there's so much information that's contradicting itself like at first the cdc said oh no masks don't work and now they're saying everybody wear masks yeah so it's tough to know what's even real i I like that you can just grab a dish towel and throw it around your face though it it, shout out to the person doing that yeah i mean it makes sense just cover if you're coughing cover i'm actually after this tomorrow morning i'm going down to inspect masks that are going back to my uh to michigan wait why because my dad owns a company that supplies hospitals with medical stuff huh? oh and the whole supply chain is messed up right now so i have to go i'm helping my dad and go and inspecting stuff in irvine we'll, kind of cool. we'll make sure they're so all do you want me to grab you guys some masks please I do. grab a, i can grab a box yeah. for you guys yeah please yeah. do make sure they're you. all all good to go hopefully um so obviously we wanted to talk about corona because it, it is still uh quite literally taking over the globe mm. uh, another thing that's taking over the globe is is tiktok oh no as, as you guys know i am addicted to tiktok i uh <sighs> i mean Horrible. shit i'm in, i'm fully in now that's not good. how I, many times do you think you could listen to i'm a savage yeah classy, classy bougie average i could yeah. tell you that logan can uh, listen to it probably uh-uh. seven hundred and eighty thousand times in a you day know, you know the dance too danny <laughs> oh yeah we've been doing Damn it. it everyone's been doing it. dude it's fun I, I i finally did the savage dance on TikTok, and I, I, I hated that I was learning it, but by the time I got it, I was having so much fun. Oh man! Just smiling at the camera, biting my lip, doing the tongue thing. Logan did Uh-oh. it so many times that just by watching him, I learned. I've I've done it. I've done it. I've done it probably probably two hundred times. But bro, there's a whole nother side to TikTok what do we got? that we don't even know about, bro. Uh oh. India TikTok. Oh, God. So, okay, on your It's fo- like a different platform? Bro, you have no idea. Bro, I'm about to show you the greatest thing ever. So, okay. <laughs> on TikTok, I don't know if you have it, you go on your For nope. You page. Mm-hmm. It is literally for you. The algorithm notices what you watch, how long you watch it, what you engage with, and then serves you things based on that. And then gives you a vaccine out of your phone. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> no, so the For You page is for you. And by the way, don't, try not to watch. This is impossible. Try not to watch TikTok when you're high, because I do that. Oh. And I notice my attention span and uh, just like appetite for bullshit is pretty much anything. So while I'm high, I'll watch TikTok and I'll watch the, 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 the worst, the just garbage. And then I wake up the next morning, I'm sober. I'm like, what the, fu- what the fuck is this? Like my For You page is, is shit, bro. I'm uh-huh. getting served content by like a, a kid in college and the video has seven views and I'm one of them. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. But anyways, bro, India TikTok. This is this is fascinating. Y'all are about to have the time of your lives. Ready? Baby, love you. Love you too. <coughs> Baby, I have coronavirus. Oh my God, oh my God, you have coronavirus? Break up, break up. Baby. No, you have coronavirus. I hate you, baby. Break up, break up, break up. Baby, I have coronavirus mask. Yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. You have... <laughs> yes! It's coronavirus. Uh, no, no, no. God, I hate you. She said you hated him instantly. You got COVID 19. Get the fuck out. I detest you. This is Hollywood and Bollywood at its finest. Wow. Bro, it's, it's, yeah. like, it's, it's like finally, like, content has become democratized in India. Like, they just mm-hmm. recent, like, the internet has recently blossomed over there exponentially. <sighs> yeah. And so, TikTok, YouTube, hence, like, T series, we saw them blow yeah, up. Yeah. And now, um, Indian uh, influencers are popping off. And, and this dude, I. I feel bad. What's his name? Fun Bucket Vargov? I mean, he's popping off. Don't feel bad. I know. As I long just, as he's I just, rocking with he it. He just happens to be the one dude I, I'm using as an example. Let, <laughs> let me show you another one. Same concept. You're looking so beautiful. <laughs> Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Kiss. Baby. Kiss. Kiss. You're so beautiful. I want kiss. Give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Big drop day of India. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Oh, it's just rapey. Wow. What the fuck is happening? I don't know about this one. <laughs> he goes, she goes, give me a kiss. She's like, no, no. And then, bro, her her man's just dips. He's well, like, he's no, baby. Something. Like you do what? Give me a kiss. No, <laughs> baby, help me. He took his shoes off too. <coughs> baby. 
Oh, and then he uses the coronavirus <laughs> to d- deter the guy trying to kiss his girlfriend yeah. that he's doing nothing. Yeah. It went on a little long. It why does, pro- it, why does he have all faster. four doors open, too? Or just two? That's what I was wondering the whole time. It was distracting the hell out of me. Oh, no. Like... <laughs> The continuity doesn't matter here. Like that's what you do it's when you have a Tesla. Longer. You know what I'm saying? You flex and have the doors open. But Bruh, you get it. yeah, you're right. With the I don't know what car that is, but it's like Volkswagen <laughs> or something. Yeah, man, India TikTok. Man, and who knows what else, what other countries are? There's just undiscovered gems on TikTok. Well, are you familiar with Bollywood? Like, have you given Bollywood at all a, a little taste? I I went on a Instagram live with a pretty famous. Uh, Bollywood actress. But you've never actress, seen. I think you've I think. never seen a Bollywood movie. No, no, dude, you're. Mi- you're missing out well, on literally sp- half the world. I know, but I don't speak mm-hmm. Hindi. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It so, absolutely doesn't matter. Subtitles, you're saying? They have, uh, they have a lot of English movies. They have subtitles. It's more of the style of film is just, it's phenomenal. The action scenes, I don't know, you should look one up. Like, they're they are the best. Wait, really? Yeah. yeah. You could probably ease in with like Slumdog Millionaire. Mm. And then- no, no, no. I'm no, saying, I'm saying <laughs> ease into the world. Ah, oh. I could do it. Yeah, I went on Instagram Live with this uh, this actress... Uh, and model, her name is Urvashi, Urvashi Rotala. And she's huge, bro. Like mm-hmm. they they have some real, real blossoming stars there. India is amazing. Is I, I haven't been there yet, but the culture is so incredible. Huge really? fan of food. So incredible. I mean, it's the oldest religion. It's like the origins of humanity. Quite quite a bit of it dates I, back there. I get my vlogs translated uh, in Hindi because I'm because I'm aware like how how big and powerful that oh, community yeah. is. And and uh, you know, hopefully one day I can I can make I can go over there and make content with Fun Bucket Bargov. You should. I, I like seriously, that'd be yeah. amazing. Like, Fun Bucket Bargov, hit us up. Bro, I just run across the country just making TikToks. That's a, that's a dream come true. Yeah. Yeah. You'd Let's be a do star, it. like the Western man to come over and just blow up Hollywood. I, I think it's something with the blonde hair and blue eyes. I'm going on Instagram live with this uh, this Russian dude tomorrow. Actually, let me get his name right. He's huge. He's the biggest influencer in Russia. And he's like, bro, the, every time I go on live with these uh, these massive social media stars from other countries, they're like, people love you over here. And I, and I can't help but think it's just because I'm literally just white and have blonde hair and blue eyes. Mm. Anyways, his name, is, his name is Gusein Gasanov. We're going on Instagram Live, wow. and he he cha- he's, he challenged me to do uh, three challenges, and I I'm going to challenge him to do three as well. And he told me what he wants to do, right? And so I'm used to like Americans doing their challenges, right. and like American influencers tend to not go as hard as we do. He, is he chugging like a half gallon of vodka? Is one is that one of them, bro? He goes one. I'm going to shave my eyebrows. <laughs> right right off the bat, I go, for sure, you're, you're fucking Russian. Right. You're so yeah. Russian. You can't get those back. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> takes years. <laughs> go back. You're, the go biggest, back. you're the biggest influencer in Russia. He's going to sh- shave his eyebrows. All right. <laughs> He's going to attempt to drink Coke with Mentos. <laughs> oh, that's actually that's sounds funny. I don't, know, I don't even know if that's possible. And then three, he's going to pierce his ear by himself. Oh, wow. So, so I see these. I'm like... Well, shit! Now we talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like okay. I gotta, I gotta come uh-huh. with, with some heat. What do we got? Cinnamon challenge. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. I've never That's done it. Fun. I've never done it, but I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to swallow that cinnamon. Ugh. Two. Oh, okay. I'm gonna run through through Elon Musk's uh, boring flamethrower. Ooh. <laughs> like someone lights it and I just run through it. Okay. I don't think it'll burn me. I don't know. I've never done it before. I mean, there's only one way to find out. Got to just got to run fast. I think yeah. that's a secret. Yeah. Um, but also, it's kind of cool because, like on YouTube, this stuff's not allowed, and it, it's interesting to see like what sites will allow you mm. to do. Like I, I posted that TikTok where I uh, went under the car, under the truck, and like on YouTube can't fly, but on TikTok they put a warning at the bottom that says this uh, activity could result in serious yeah. injury. Yeah. So you kind of get a pass for it. Oh, YouTube's soft now. Hell of soft. They have to be. They have to be. Uh-huh. Their 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 advertisers pay for the pay for like the bills for oh, their yeah. employees mm-hmm. and everything. And um, you know, it's 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 an unfortunate little cycle that we've been trapped in. But you know, yeah. working working with like if I can run through a flamethrower on Instagram Live, but not YouTube, I'm gonna fucking do it. Of course. Number three, I've done this before. I'm gonna put each of my fingers in a mouse trap like at the same time like this. Ah. Uh, so oh. I think it'll be a good live. Like, so if you're listening to this. Uh, we'll have already gone live, but um, hopefully, hopefully you tuned in. <laughs> and if not, just make sure to go watch it. I'm sure you'll see it. Someone's um, going to record that for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of, uh, he's, he's that, you said that guy's going to get his ear pierced by himself. Yeah. I just, uh, I found blood on the mirror in the bathroom where you pulled out the oh. nose ring. Oh no. Uh, it's pretty gross. Because I think I was breathing heavy and I went, Pfft. like, you know, when you pop a zit and it goes on the mirror yeah. it's been a while since I had one of those by the way as gross as that is those are my favorite and don't act great. like they aren't yours either very satisfying when it, when it hits the mirror mm-hmm. projectiles mm-hmm. at thousands of miles an hour yeah mm-hmm. 
I also have an unrelated story that involving projectiles that I don't really know if I should say in this podcast, but I think I'm going to. Oh. Yeah, let it <laughs> you, I mean, you have to now. <laughs> Fuck. Like projectile fluids or what are we talking? Missiles? Yeah. Projectile bodily fluids. Oh. All right, all right. Let me, let me run you through this. Okay. okay. We're in quarantine. We're all in quarantine. We're God. fucking <laughs> bored. Okay. <laughs> what does boredom lead to? Ejaculation. Masturbation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Correct. I, I mean, was cutting right here. to the chase. Well, if a woman ejaculates, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. It happens. In general, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so fucking positive. That the masturbation rates have skyrocketed, and yes. you can't, yeah. bro. I've talked, I've talked to women who are like, I can't stop using my vibrator. Like, I'm so bored. It's all I know how to do. And and dudes, like, we got a dick. It's built into our body. Like, we can't just not do anything with it. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's <laughs> metaphysics, was what you're explaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, bro. Rocket science. All right, quick story. I, I'm not gonna get too vile. God. All right, I'm sitting in bed, doing my thing, bro. I'm beating the meat. And uh, dudes, you can you can tell when when your uh, ejaculate is gonna come out at a much faster, more powerful rate than the others. Like maybe you haven't nutted in a long time. Maybe I don't know. You're like you're extra horny. Who knows what it is? But you gotta be ready for that, dude. Like sometimes this shit comes out uh, like like a fifty caliber fucking rifle, like bulletproof vest, piercing, pew, piercing, pew pew pew. And so I knew this was gonna be one of those. Here's mm. the problem: I'm laying on my back. Uh oh. Which also arises another problem. Like, d- yeah. do dudes masturbate standing up? I don't mind. I don't mind laying on my back. I think it's probably a blend of both. Uh, uh, different strokes for different <laughs> folks. <laughs> like, quite you, literally, we all know that. Different Incredible. strokes for different folks. <laughs> so, bro, I'm laying. I'm about. To, I'm about to finish, bro. I'm about to do do the deed, right? And I know this shit's coming in hot. Uh oh. All of a sudden, poof, exits my 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 genitals, Uh-oh. and I see this cum shot coming right in my face. <sighs> Now here's the moment. Here's the moment of truth, bro. Am I gonna be a man about this and take my own cum shot to my head, or do oh, I matrix no. dodge the fuck out of it, bro? Oh, I have, I have wow. a quarter second to react. So I see this thing. I'm like, I'm like, nope, not today. I go. My movie becomes my life becomes a matrix. I go. Cum shot, large one, bam, right past my face, lands on the pillow. I'm like, oh, bro, right here, I see it. I'm like, oh my god, that was close. And then I look at my pillows, right? I'm like, ah. And I knew I had just dodged a bullet in the form of sperm. And um, the first thought that came to my mind, honestly, was. Um, how do I hide this cum stain from Maria, my maid? Oh. <laughs> wow. How do I do it? Wow. That, that's right. nice of you, though. That's that's really thinking about the crisis going on Dog, right now. This, this yeah. woman sees everything that goes on in my room. She'll come up. Use condom. She'll come up. Cum stain. She'll come up. Uh, blood on the mirror. Because who knows? A zit on the mirror. Who, yeah. I, don't, I don't fucking know. Like, like... I, yes, ideally, I'm cleaning up after myself. But also, part of the reason I, I masturbate in the morning is so I can go right back to bed. Mm. It's so nice. Uh, uh, I'm relaxed. That's why. That's why women. You have sex with your man. He's useless. Afterwards, he's mm. he's he's. I clock clock him out. Don't, down for the count. He's done. Like he's a sack of flesh. Let him be. Well, what'd you guys think of Andre's? Because uh, I've been on this tip as well. Don't, no pun don't, intended. Don't even start with me. You're you're not in for the no fap. You're you're against no fap. Hold obviously. on. Well, clearly. Wait, hold on. No no fap or no ejaculate. No ejaculate. What do you say? Are you doing it too? Yeah. Spencer, so let me get oh. this straight. It's the, you're it, having an orgasm, but you're not ejaculating? Well, I'm still working my way in, all right? I'm not going to lie. It's how, not a, it's not 100% hit how rate. How do you even begin to practice that? I've completely cut out masturbation, but... That's that's good. When we're talking right. about sexy time... Uh, no, it's it's you have to pre- you have to train. Andre, are you at 100% hit rate at this point? Or? Uh, now I am. Really? That's crazy. Andre's perfected That's it. crazy. Wow. When's Dedication. the last time you, you came? <laughs> 1974. It's, it's been, so it's been a while. It's been you say you time. have to train, bro, but like yeah. also, okay, so for sports mm-hmm. you have to train, of course. But your training doesn't it doesn't take place during the games. So you're not masturbating mm-hmm. and you're only training mm-hmm. during your your sex, which I would assume is max twice a day, bro. I know you ain't fucking more than that. No, no way. <laughs> and if hey, if you are at home, I mean, now's a good time to have a lot of sex. Yeah, you I mean you should be having sex right now. Currently. Currently. While listening to the podcast. Our voices are beautiful. Right. Soothing. 
But anyways, because <laughs> every time I look at Andre, I see that vein in his forehead. We all know it's filled with nut. Uh huh. You don't have that vein, so where does yours go? I do. I do. Oh. And I think the hat's blocking it. Oh, is um, that the, that's a, that's a yeah. nut vein. It, it, honestly, <clears throat> I think guys need to try it out. Guys need it. Oh. You, you, you can't dog oh. it until you try it. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things where like you got to give yourself a month of not nutting and you will unlock a superpower. You'll start to see through walls. <laughs> And you'll start to be like, wow, I, can, I could see through that. walls this whole time. Here's here's why I, I will not do that. That's okay. Yeah. Mainly just because fuck that. <laughs> mm. Right. And then fair, also, fair. All right. I, y'all have girlfriends. That's true. So you can do the experiment. Yeah, thing. we can experiment. Mm. Me, dude, bro, I don't know if you, like the last time you hooked up with a random girl, but if you don't come... Like I've had women sh- like make me prove to them that I came. Like grab you by the back of the neck. <laughs> like bro, like and it, you didn't come, and I'll be like, no, I did. Tr- no, I did in my head. Like is that what it's right. like? Uh, I can't, in my head, I had no. Oh, orgasm. maybe that's what you could start saying. Oh, that's, yeah, don't in worry. My, it, I'm practicing ejaculation. <laughs> like if you don't come, I, you could. I yeah. will get. I will get laughed out of my own room. Uh. They will laugh at me, and I will leave my house. Come shaming. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> come shaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, I, I, I've i been having a, a semi-hard time making any love during this quarantine because you're supposed to be staying safe. Right. Right? This one girl, this one one girl, I made it like... Who can you trust? I mean, this, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I made maybe an attempt, like little, you know, I was shooting my shot. And she said, she said, no, you, you fuck everyone. I'm like, no, but no, but we're in quarantine. She goes, that's not true. You're like community dick. Ugh. She called me community oh, dick. Community dick. Mm. No, no, mm. no, no. You're just, it's not community. Uh, you're just a giver. I like the way you spin things all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. There was one the other day. Uh, you know how Logan just gets into his phone and he, you can't get him out. Of course. Yeah. So you, you're having a conversation with him and then he turns to his phone you're like, man, why are you so distracted? And then I realized he's not distracted. He's just completely focused on something else. I'm focused, right? Mm. So Logan, get off, get off your phone. Mm-hmm. You're so distracted. You're not giving us time. No, stop there. I'm focused. But what, do you, what if he's focused on turds? Oh, he Turd could be focused content. on the wrong thing, but he is focused. <laughs> For the sake of me just like not changing anything about my bad habits, I'm, I'm going to use excuses like, oh, I'm a, I'm a giver. Mm, mm, <laughs> when when mm. uh, like the, logan why did you prematurely come it's been one minute that we've been having sex well i know you have things to do <laughs> so go do them now that you have this extra time yeah that's very generous the couches out there you know mm-hmm. we in the house the problem is that they're, they're not great for the house you know mm-hmm. but they might be great for someone else that's they're true. great couches did you sell those Are they, we have we have offers we're finding, I mean, everything about those couches is problematic, mm-hmm. including the fact that they, f- they suck. Including the timing of which you're selling it as well. Someone yeah. pointed that yeah. out to me. Economy's at an all time P- low. No, no one's furniture shopping yeah. for, for luxury Mercedes couches. Be, there's, there's somebody out there right now who's walking around in their $300 million mansion and they're saying, I could use two Mercedes <laughs> Benzes in my living room. I, I don't know if there is. This might be one of These those things where there's not somebody for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's enough. Yeah. There's fish. In, there's plenty of fish in the sea. No, yeah. not Mercedes couch fish. Your good I, friend Chase likes Mercedes stuff. Should I ask him? I was just with him today. Y'all, y'all will see this on the vlog. I, I'm gonna ask Chase. Chase is the one who lent me his Rolls, his Rolls mm-hmm. Royce, and then in the music video, I dented his hood and had to pay sixty five hundred dollars for to to fix it. And then we also found out that it was really only like a two hundred dollar repair job because he didn't replace the fender. Uh, oh, shady. Way fucked up. Ch- yeah, Chase leaned into him for that. But um. Chase let it, let me drive his his little doom buggy today, so I was drifting a little bit. I I, 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 fu- I fucking flipped it. I flipped it. Uh-oh. I was in it for tw- max. No no exaggeration. Fifteen seconds. <laughs> so you're talking about getting, you're talking about getting these things for the ranch, and you've already flipped one in a parking lot. It was uh, not a parking lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just something to get used to. But also, I'm getting I'm getting Polaris. Uh, this was I don't I don't I'm not sure what this was but it was not Polaris. Did you text me upside down in the ATV? Is that why we're late to start this podcast? Yes. Yeah. I'm not I'm not kidding. We had to flip it back over, uh. and I've never been upside down in anything. I also realized today I don't like being upside down. Like mm-hmm. that was a weird sentence that came out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. I said mm-hmm. I said to David, I don't like being upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look him in the eye when you said it? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's too much gravity or that's what? new layers of friendship. I don't I don't know. It just like all the all the 
gravity just sucks that blood right to your head. Mm. And um, I noticed this too. Like now that I'm getting older, I don't like um, carnival rides oh, as much anymore. Horrible. And just being mm. thrown all over the place. Like I'm a pretty reckless dude, but I don't like not being in control like that. Mm. But you were wearing your seatbelt today, right? I was. And Thank it's not just a seatbelt. It's a, I mean, this thing locks you in. Yeah. And also the roll cages on those thing are, things are incredibly thick. Like there, there was no real danger. I probably could have rolled it probably 10 to 20 times. I'm sure at one point in my life, like I'll, I'll, I'll hit that number. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, cause just cause I'm mainly just dumb. Oh, okay. Is this like your new apocalypse whip or are you still happy with the Yeti? Stoked with the Yeti, except Danny, unfortunately in these little, uh, tracks that, that we were doing this morning, um, one of the hills was so steep and then there was a big dip after it. The gas cans on the top got ripped off uh -oh. by um, inertia. Just ripped, completely ripped off. So we'll, we'll, we'll fix it. And the, uh -huh. they're full, by the way. You filled them up? Filled them they're up. fucking heavy. Yeah. 60 pounds well, each. I, I, I didn't, re like, way to go. Yeah. Heavy. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. I got a new truck. So I, did you see it? I did not see it. Yet. Yeah. I saw the picture. Yeah. I want, is it here? Yeah. I'll come it's see here. it after. Yeah. So oh, I'm ready for the apocalypse. Oh. I, um, I was going to say something to lead into the next topic, but I've completely forgotten it. Ooh. That's but, okay. but I, uh, uh, it's going to come to mm -hmm. me. Oh, oh, how are people making money? Mm. How are people making money? I, I'm, dude, I'm really, I'm yeah. like, the more this goes on, I'm like, whoa. I could, I can work remotely. I can make content and it happens to be like, I'm, I'm pretty much relatively unaffected by this, but mm. what about the people with actual like jobs and work and nine to five and like empl employees and bosses and people have been let go from their jobs. So, yeah. so, so if they're let go, if they're let go, who's paying them? The government? Uh, no, no, yeah, you can, they're fine. They're fine. They fi so they file for unemployment. For unemployment. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. Yeah. It's, it's nuts. I mean, and a lot of contracts too. Like I had a few brand deals that like in section nine C said like, yo, if there's ever like a natural disaster or like a pandemic, essentially, yeah. we can cancel it. We can void this contract. No that you already way. Signed. Yeah. Oh. Shout out to those lawyers for predicting that. I know. Right. I was like, hey, shout out. out. I wouldn't be mad about that. But yeah. Uh, but not. yeah, people are being seriously affected by this. Bro, I can imagine people are like, dude, I can't imagine having... To support a family and being laid off from work or, or not. Yeah. I keep not, seeing talks about like the everyone's going to get a check, but where where's the concrete examples of that? Uh, small businesses you can. Yeah, you have to apply for it. So if you're listening to this and maybe you qualify, you should look into but that. But is the check equal to the amount that you were making at work? It's like a thousand bucks. <laughs> It's a th so yeah, they're just like an not. arbitrary number yeah. that like that hopefully support. And you, you you had pay, to have more. filed your 2018 taxes as well. So yeah, oh not everybody's God. getting it. And most most Americans, I think it's like 60 some percent or more than that, are living paycheck, paycheck to, to paycheck. paycheck. I was just gonna ask you what so this, this is. This, the stat was this is rocking people. Damn. Small businesses that have to close their doors and they were waiting for that next month of yeah. I feel so bad for small businesses. I feel bad. I, I feel I feel immensely bad for the mom and pop shop that like everyone has that like ice cream shop in their in their town or something that, that just cannot survive. Yeah, I'm hoping yeah. that after all this, that whatever it is that took everyone out of you know out of work can also somehow be reimagined to give them more work. Mm -hmm. So if it's that mom and pop shop and this you know the doors got closed on the thing, it, you know hopefully after all this is done, there's a way. That the community can band together, or you know, the the waves can keep rolling and the, the shops can open back up. But I, what's that going to be? I'm I'm trying to think of ways <laughs> that I can help people, and I have not yet thought of a good thing other than continuing to stay positive and find ways mm -hmm. to keep myself busy. Yeah, well, then there's the flip side of it where there's people that are making a crap load of money right now mm -hmm. and are going to you know the who are, the people who are millionaires right now invested in 2008 when the stock market crashed. You know, so mm -hmm. there are people who are actually the next wave of millionaires are being created right now sure. because they were responsible. They saved money. So I think this is a time where if you're really suffering financially, like do something about it next time, you know, like mm. start saving money once you actually start making money again and like prepare for this. This is going to happen again. This isn't just a one time thing in our lifetime. I'm trying to not avidly, but I'm trying to my best to capitalize in on this in any way that I can financially. Like I know the stock market's way, way, way low. So like maybe it's a good time to invest for me. Like I'm going to talk to my team about doing that, but like there's got to be some way to, if, if you, 
if you are managing to uh, still survive and thrive in this environment, that like there's got to be something, and, and maybe even DM me on Instagram if you got some sort of investment or like <clears throat> tips on anything. For some reason, business is like a foreign language to me. Like I, I'm a creative, so every time I start to do business, I I, I just don't understand what's happening. And now that I'm 25, I gotta get I gotta get my. my you gotta get the maturation game rolling. I just it's, it's so hard for up. me to to uh, become interested in stuff that I'm not really interested, interested in. in like okay. I, if if i invest my time into business mm -hmm. it's so i can make money and now i'm like i don't make content to make money i make content because i fucking love it and yeah. now that i'm like the the intention is so i can make money it's 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 so it's work that's work to me yeah. mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying when i have to when i have to go against what my my body and my mind is telling me about this activity i'm doing just to survive that's okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, it is. It's it's life, but I don't know. I like to have fun and break plates more. Yeah. It's a blend. I would definitely say that your childlike nature is important for uh, your content, right? Like you, you have a childlike curiosity for the world yeah. and an endless ball of energy that is much like a child. Yeah. So that's helpful. <clears throat> but definitely not anymore. I'm telling you, bro. I'm 25 now. Things have, uh, yeah. things have changed. <laughs> oh, right? Like the uh, beach you made out of peanut butter. And, uh, <laughs> God damn it. I was high. I got, I got, that's I'm not done. an excuse. You started before. What do you, you were mean? High. That's uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what happened? You you started we making wanna, a beach. What do you want to know? Spats, I sm smeared peanut butter on my marble countertop, put sand on it, put a beach on it, a miniature beach. Where you? So you you, so you mentioned you were high. At, at what quantity of marijuana did you consume? All of it. No, no, no. That's actually the worst part, bro. I was just using weed as a scapegoat. I wasn't high. <laughs> I okay. got I got high like halfway to it because it's the edible hit like bro <laughs> bro like I ate, a, I ate an edible. edible that's why I, I ate an that's edible why. I was so focused I'm like this beach is gonna be great and then also an hour later I'm like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was a great beach though do you yeah. have that TikTok I don't even know if I'm gonna post it bro I'm just <laughs> you don't have to what if you showed it here nah <laughs> I'm just I mean I'm I'm just putzing around doing dumb shit and also after the whole thing happened on my birthday um. With the six dollar mantis shrimp, that has nothing to do with Mike not being here. <laughs> oh. I realized because we went to the mother tree, which is a, a tree where moms live, right? Or how does it work? I think that's quite. what it works. There's a Andre's vegan girlfriend is the leader of this place called the Mother Tree, mm -hmm. where there's a bunch of other vegans running around. Mm -hmm. Now this place is crazy because. Uh, Every girl there is hot as fuck. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they're all so nice and so vegan. Extremely, extremely beautiful and woke at the same time. Like, like here I am, bro. Putz around LA. I'm used to thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm talking tings, bro. Mm -hmm. And then I go here and here are, are like some real women. Yeah. With good intentions. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, you stepped into heaven. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Wait, what? <laughs> good intentions. That's crazy. Uh, who like don't really like drinking. <laughs> What? No, impossible. You you listen you listen you don't listen to the top fifty chart on Spotify? There's no way. Hold on a second. Y'all don't shake your ass. Wow. Real women, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of them, one of them when I was leaving, she attempted to give me this gift. It was my birthday gift. Ooh. And um it was a flower in a vase. It was a flower in a vase. And uh she goes, Here you go, Logan. It, it was cool. She goes, I picked this this morning. And I looked at the flower. I took the vase. I go, hey, thank I'll just use her name, Kylie. Hey, Kylie. She go, I go, hey, Kylie, this, fly this flower's like, honest, this is going to die. It's halfway to death. It's withering now, you see? And she goes, she goes, what? well, I picked it for you. Like, I, it, had, it said your name. And I go, Kylie, you understand? I'm going to have to take this to my car. I'm going to take it home. By the time I get home, this flower will be dead. Mm -hmm. Now I'll be left with this vase with water in it, assuming it didn't spill in my car because I have nowhere to put this because it doesn't fit my cup holder. Mm -hmm. She goes, she goes, you know, you're being kind to me and I just want to give you something and it hit me. I'm like, oh, this is the thing my mom told me about. I go, Kylie, I'm not good at receiving gifts. I love that you picked this flower for me, <laughs> but I just am not good at receiving. And she goes, she goes, yeah, but it said your name. And I go, where? Oh, it does where? Where does it say my name? She goes, no, no, the flower spoke to me. I said, ah, yes, vegans. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, in that case, I didn't know y'all spoke. I'll, I'll fucking take it. I took it, spilled in my car, all the water gone. It's dead. The flower's fucking dead. Maria took it and How's threw the it in the trash. Though? How's the vase? Uh, Andre's girlfriend took it back to the mother <laughs> tree. Go. I got left with nothing. Solid. <laughs> but like this that. is why, like, stop giving me things. <laughs> 
So, so what? Oh, oh, I have an idea, by the way. All right. So, for I know you keep saying that you don't want gifts, but next year, what if the, the gifts that we give you, we have to get on that day? I, again, I like the way you put spins on things, but still, just nah. Oh. I think I'm going to make my birthday about other people from now on. That's mm-hmm. a shift I'm, I'm going to make at 25, specifically my mom. Mm-hmm. That bitch put up with some shit. True. <laughs> For 25 years. True. That bitch. And there's two of me, bro. <laughs> like she, like she, my birthday is for my, my sweet, sweet mother. So for her, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to celebrate it now. So after Logan finishes all his videos, little TikToks, he's like, yo, you need to, you need to watch this one. Come up, come watch this one. And you did that to Pam for how many years? 18 years. I would show her my <laughs> dumbass videos. <laughs> I love Pam. How's Pam handle, how's she handling quarantine? I think, I think, well, I would assume, well, she lives a very, like, simple, like, modest life. Can so, we check in with Pam? Right now? I mean... No. No? Okay. I'm I'm, I'm more <laughs> excited about the question, how is Greg doing? Oh, we know how Greg's doing. Greg is, I think, I think Greg might be, might be peaking in a good way. Really? Been peaking for a while. Yep. Bruh, his comedy is off the charts. Really? It's off good. the charts? Have you seen this dude in the vlogs? Bro, he's become such a funny character that like is so just like outlandish. People love hearing what he has to say. I Do you think? think I know why. It's because he sit on top of a mountain all day thinking for, of yeah. things to say for when people talk to him. <laughs> There's no way. Yes. No what else way. do you do? Uh, or is it just because he made it? Like, let's be I honest, Greg. Yeah. He f- I, he fucking made I it. I think that's it. Honestly, like I think, f- that, like hopefully everyone reaches a point in their life where they can just check that box and right. be like, yep, yep. Now nah, I'm just having fun. He's there. He's there. He just gets to, I mean, live on a <laughs> ranch in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. What does he eat out there? Rocks. I don't know because every time we come out there, he he demands that I bring leftovers. But you know what he should be eating, actually? <laughs> um, magic spoon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Man, these transitions get smoother and smoother. That was a good one. This episode is brought to you by Magic Spoon. What do you mean host note? Please open with a personal story. You just did. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was very personal, actually. He just keeps getting smoother and smoother. <laughs> well, fuck. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid. And that was actually facts. Mm-hmm. But uh, I realized it was full of sugar and junk that when I started to grow up, I actually sort of stopped except when I'm high. But I've been trying to cut, cut down on carbs, sugar, on healthy food. Um, and these Magic Spoons are actually very healthy. They're very good. Zero sugar, 12 grams of protein, only three net grams of carbs in each serving. There's four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. It tastes amazing. Uh, it says here that they're too good to be true. Too good to be true. Go to magicspoon.com slash Logan, grab a variety pack, try it today, and be sure to use our promo code Logan at checkout to get free shipping. And they're so confident in their product, it's back with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash Logan. Use a promo code Logan for free shipping. Mm. Magic Spoon, everybody. There you go. Nice. Yeah, man. Not a good time to be a, not a good time to be single. I'm asking myself a lot of questions. I'm asking mm. myself a lot of questions during this quarantine. Yeah. One of them you, is the following. I'll ask you boys this. And not, to, not to go back to the dick sand, but if your dick could speak, what would it say? Mm. Wow. You know? That's profound. If my dick could speak, what would it say? What, what would it say? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Um, we made it <laughs> <laughs> we're still here that's we're what you would say yeah, would we're still like, going I miss exploring your, so your penis would say that <laughs> mm-hmm. he's, like, he's, he's a he's a, uh, a cave uh, what's it called a spelunker a spelunker Ooh, mm-hmm. in it's own cave or other caves <laughs> no no, no, the, no inward <laughs> your dick is a spelunker yeah <laughs> that's funny that's funny um, Mine would That's say good. probably something like this, like, uh, <clears throat> let me fuck something. <laughs> and then when, when I'm like, when I, go, when I, when I do <laughs> this, so I, true. I go, yo, I go, chief, I go, chief, chief Wahoo. I go, chief, calm down. We're in quarantine. You don't want COVID, do you? He goes, let me fuck something. <laughs> the problem is that you're also saying that every day. So uh, what's the deal? Yeah. Are you controlled by your dick? I'm not saying yes. that I got Jill. The answer is yes. I got Jill, bro. <laughs> Although she gets a little wildy with those matrix cum shots. <laughs> if that's this, question- this is me, bro. This is me. At 9 a.m. every morning. Y'all don't see it. Hold on. I'm going to make a fucking great physical comedy joke. Oh, no. Ready? This is me. 9 a.m. every morning. 
Bitte. <lacht> <laughs> yes. Good. Wow. Resurrected. To all you people listening, audio only. He's doing Matrix things right now. Is this an every morning Dodging thing? His have you missed? Have you missed a shot? Um. Hit myself in my my mug once. Ooh. Your mug. <laughs> Were you clean shaven, or did you have a beer at the time? I was clean shaven, and also. <laughs> It was not my fault. It was not my fault. <laughs> what? Bro. What are you talking about right now? Part of the reason I can't pull the matrixes off is because I'm in control of the joystick. Uh-huh. <laughs> Women don't have dicks. The, I mean, so when they're true. when they are in control of one, they don't know what to do. Uh-huh. Right? And when you have that much power, mm. they have no idea where it's gonna go, how to aim or anything. <laughs> So yeah, one time, you know, I was being like, like finished off, we'll say. <laughs> and she didn't, she just didn't aim it properly. And it, yeah, it came on my head, dude. On, the, on, on your head? Like the top of the head? I don't know. I try to block this out of my memory, but I, <laughs> I know it Dang. wasn't ideal, bro. And, uh, I, and I, she laughed at me. Yeah. And I said, I said, this, this is your fault. You got got. Oh, do you think she did it intentionally? hundred percent. hundred percent. Yo, have you, has your 100%. girl. <laughs> she played so Space your, Invaders. Your girl's right there. She's giving me no. But I will say this, bro. <laughs> when your girl, <laughs> when you're comfortable enough with your girl where she can like uh, pretend that your penis is hers. Uh-huh. Dog, this is not, I mean, this, this is like a pivotal point in relationships. hundred percent. And then, and then they know what it's like because they're so amused. Mm-hmm. By male genitalia. Yeah. And by the way, why would they not? They're so fascinating. They give it the. Do you get the sound effects too? Oh my when god! They're it around. They go. They go. Wee, wee, pop, yeah, pop, yeah. Pop, pop. <laughs> it's like they're like they're like Godzilla in a play, like a, a so little true. a little miniature city. All of them. They go. They it's go. So ah, cute. Ah, <laughs> like a kid with a giant fire truck yeah. running over a city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Am I wrong so. for never having that happen? You also, uh, you'll get. Am I, I? I think I'm. I'm about as wrong for having that okay. happen as you are for fair, not fair, having fair. it happen. It'll happen. It'll hey, happen someday for right, sure. I got something. Mm-hmm. This this has been on my mind. It's not like an issue, but maybe we could come to a conclusion. Mm-hmm. What's Whoa. up, man? You got hots for a, a girl I used to communicate with. Whoa. That's actually that's actually hella. Int- this is a good topic. <laughs> uh oh. I, I do, tension. Mac. I do. Yeah. So okay. So what's so what's good? As far as I understand, you guys attempted to mm. spark something and nothing happened. Now, do I have the green light or do I do I talk to you about it like on a podcast in front of millions of people yeah. or what? Well, I thought, first of all, that I, I'm I'm beyond the situation. I'm not interested. It's, you know, friend. Great. Love it. Yeah. Uh, not a romantic partner for me. So to you, all fair game. I don't think she'll like you, but. Um, <laughs> um, to clear the air, no, this is all good, man. Uh, we, we attempted to spark something; it didn't happen that way. Totally fine. Sometimes people are better off as friends. Yep, I'm totally cool with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm waiting for the butt. I can hear it. Oh, there is actually no butt. Just be respectful. Oh, okay. her. I I'm good. Oh, oh. Well, well sh- shake my hand, shake, brother. Shake, shake the hand. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also don't think she'll like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I told Andre. Um, why would I tell Andre? Yeah, well, because <laughs> he's my friend. We just vent to my friends. Yeah, I, I, I'm, <laughs> sure. I'm worried sometimes. Like I see these, these, these. They're not girls. They're women. Oh yeah, who mm-hmm. are like she's women. A beautiful woman. Yeah, she, she, like she just won't demand mediocrity and like mm-hmm. inadequacy for my part. As far as like being a lover and a partner goes, which I'm not sure. You said this the other day. You're like you're not at the point where you're willing to give. Uh, that much energy to mm-hmm. to a uh, to an officiary beneficiary uh, to, 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 a to a person who I'm not like really willing to take things to the next level with. Right. I'm I'm looking for uh, looking waiting, you know, just mm-hmm. you know, uh, doing what I can until I get to the point where I find someone that is um, willing to take me on and all my challenges, my insufficiencies, as well as I'm willing to take on theirs, and then we work together to be grown ass adults. Yeah, and like if you're you know, you're saying that you fear that you might be inadequate for her with your whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that's good if she's a full grown woman that can actually like whip you into shape a little bit. I just need to be like, I need to be challenged and stimulated in a way that 
I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Life is so complex and I get serious, like anxiety. Like here I am, I say it all the time. Like, yo, I want to, mm-hmm. I want a wife. I want kids, whatever. And then when like an actual woman comes around, I'm like, ah, oh, no. mm-hmm. I'm like, no. Yeah. They shine the light. They shine the light on your darkness. Yeah. Oh, Wait, what's it? Are you, have you been thinking about this though? During quarantine? Are you like, are you feeling a little lonely? Of course, bro. I've been saying it's a horrible time to be single. Like, yeah. I see all my friends with girlfriends and they're all so isolated and spending time with each other. And I'm, again, just trying not to come on my face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're in a sticky situation. It. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know, man. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, man, fuck you guys. <laughs> hey, Spence. What up? Do you think you have to love a person to make love? Ooh. Uh, well, no. You technically don't. But should you? Like, yeah. No, yeah. no I'm just talking about, like, te- like, can you can you have, like, a one-night stand and make love instead of just, like, yeah. fuck? Yeah, <laughs> totally. I, I'm, I'm sure you could. Yeah? I'm that sure one night could. that you go on a vacation in uh, Puerto Rico and mm. you're like, ah, oh, every all of my longings and desires have finally manifested in this one point when you found that one beautiful woman yeah. you can have passionate love making mm-hmm. affairs with her mm-hmm. and then go off in the distance and her see your gun but i don't know if it's all oh, that happened to you <laughs> oh <okay. laughs> wait i was like why is this such a detailed yeah, like puerto rico. story i feel what he's saying i was like wait it was mexico it wasn't puerto rico shout mm-hmm. out <laughs> <laughs> this is why i had the smoke screens <laughs> oh, there's only one there's two other people that would have understood that and they were on the trip with us yeah but good on you for remembering. <laughs> well because i the reason i ask is because uh, i was asked the other day like when's the, who's the last when's the last time you've made love and i didn't I didn't know the answer. Like I said, it, I said a girl that who I'd been like seeing for some time, but then I really thought about. It. I don't know if we've ever like like made made love. Mm. What, what? So what's like the wall that is up that you feel like just it, you're not making love? You know, what's the blocking point? Feel, feeling the love, dude. Like there's time. There's times where like I'll be uh, mid sex and like I could swear I love this girl but I, I, I definitely don't it's Chief Wahoo talking it's him going mm-hmm. we love you yeah but I know we don't and so I'm like I'm just I guess I just miss that uh, that familiarity and uh, and uh, energy of giving like I feel like making love is a lot of about giving mm-hmm. and satisfying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and fucking is just being satisfied yeah it's more selfish for sure which which uh, that's unfortunately the state i'm in right now like i I obviously do my best uh to make sure the 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 girl is satisfied and whatnot but um yeah i'd like to get to i'd like to get to a place where i could uh i could could spread my seed in in a in a. I'm done talking. So we're gonna put, we're gonna put you on the Bachelor. You're looking for love. We're putting you on the Bachelor. Thought about yeah. going on that show. This is so. This was a show we created uh, while Logan was in boxing camp. It was called <laughs> the Batch Alert because he was he was not having sex, so he was storing up his batch. Um, and I think you should start now. You should start building the batch again. And in you know six to eight months, I will we'll do have, it. We'll Be- have a show. It, you could do it like a quarantine edition where they all wear masks and they have to be six feet away at <laughs> and all times. And you FaceTime all of them. They have to be That's six hilarious. feet away and all have to be six feet tall. The quarantine bachelor. The quarantine. The quatchler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good idea. I, yo, I thought about um, going on, on The Bachelor. I thought about doing a lot of reality TV shows. The problem is and why I think I'll never be The ba- I'll never be the Bachelor is because um, part of the reason that show works is the authenticity. Mm. these men and women really do going on, go on there expecting to fall in love and get married forever. How could you yeah. first, first off, first off, or <laughs> are you fucking crazy? It's a reality TV show. It's the never, odds it, aren't good. I, I've never understood yeah. how you I, could. I think even statistically, no, I think only like one or two of them have stayed together. <laughs> like, oh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. If, I think a lot of them just go on there for some clout. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that but, but, but are, I think they are still maybe authentic about, trying to fall in love yeah i could never understand how you could marry someone who was literally dating like 15 people at one time no one can in real life understand that that's <laughs> a, but it's so i think that's probably why they break up 
Because yeah, uh, they get like two years into their marriage and they're like, yo, what did you really do with Stacy on that uh, that second to last so, date right before me? It's so weird to me. Oh, <laughs> you it's know? so messed up. It's so weird to Once me. Once they find out, just done. But I would probably go on the show and just make like a joke of everything. And it, it, wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be good. Like... So maybe maybe we need to do our own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe or maybe even like fuck the bachelor completely and all my love uh, desires. I, I'll do the Amazing Race. <laughs> I talked to James Charles. He's down to be my partner. Ooh. Yep. That's LPX. That's a dynamic duo. Duo yep. Yep. for sure. Racing across the globe, amazingly. Wow. It's kind of the premise of the show. That's why I said that, Mac. Wow. What's your girlfriend making? I think she's doing some jewelry. Yeah. She making one of those things you put on your head and it scratches your scalp. <laughs> no. Those are amazing. Those yeah, those are, are phenomenal. Well, yeah, no, I get, everyone's taking up new hobbies during this quarantine. Uh huh. Yeah, you've been, have, have you been doing some art? Like, what's your new hobby? <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. Oh. He went from absolutely bashing TikTok <sighs> to being the number one. Not that you're definitely not the number one. No, not, not even, even not, not even close. But not even not even just bashing TikTok. Bro, I'm about as deep as it gets. I am doing the dances like. Uh, <sighs> This is what they did. It's, it's, it hurts. Now. It still hurts me. I, I just don't know about the style of content like being sustainable. Mm. Like the consumption at least. Like I think you could create and make it, but like you're constantly getting even more than Instagram, you're getting dopamine hits like an insane mm. amount. Mm. So like you're in the sh- more shallow frontal lobes versus like actually having any deep connection to the content like what what i'm getting at is are any of these followers from tiktok are you seeing them move or like engage with things I, beyond the content there i'm not but i'm also like still semi bro i've been making tiktoks for like probably what like two weeks now three weeks like Dude, it's been like two months what you've been doing tiktok yeah you've been at it for a while i have mm-hmm. you've been jesus TikTok, christ sure. losing track of time yeah um I so I don't know. For me, no. But like, you have the like the Addison Rays and the Charlie D'Amelios who who are definitely seeing like crossover and successful transi- mm-hmm. transitioning. But um, like I'm always I'm always curious what's going to happen with 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 these young stars, you know. And it's it's funny because when I was coming up, I was the young star, and now I'm finally feeling like like a veteran creator. Like mm-hmm. I'm not a vet yet. I'm still very much in like like prime creator form mm-hmm. but when i'm 30 years old like what are you gonna be doing i don't know like are, am i am i like one of the am i an og yeah still doing can, can TikToks. i make can i make can i make tiktok still that are me like am i am i gonna be 30 years old and jumping under my g-wagon here's the deal i well, saw that, jessica alba doing a tiktok the other day and she still got it man. i love what you just said mm-hmm. jessica alba shout out you're so right she's done hollywood she's done you're right. I don't Products, think that, bro, and now and she, she's doing TikTok. And she's 38 years old. Ooh. Is she active on TikTok or does oh, yeah. she just hop on oh. and destroy it and then leave? Oh yeah, she's swinging them hips, bro. It was I not kidding. I saw her do a <laughs> she did the savage dance and I teared up a bit. It may, it, mm. it made me refall in love yeah. uh with Jessica Alba. I actually asked Mac, I go, by the way, she married cuz I was a uh, uh, hop skipping a jump away from whew, in those DMs. Mm. You can still say mm. hi, maybe have like a uh, platonic relationship. Won't do it, can't do it. My heart would swell up. Mm-hmm. But where's my Jessica Alba? I that's know you're what, watching. That's what you need. Is, let me see if I can play this. Oh, I can't. But there's a... Here, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Oh, no, I can't play because of the sound. What, what, what'd you say? Andre said she's not watching. <laughs> she's, she's definitely not watching. Not watching. Yeah, Which is no, probably a good no thing. Way. Yeah, that's true. She doesn't even know about this life you're living. Girl. Do you think your wife knows who you are right now? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. And I also think she thinks I'm a fucking goober, bro. But that's she ain't that can be good. She, she ain't wrong. That's typically how beautiful love stories start. Yeah. I just I like I like exceeding expectations. Like I like proving people wrong. I like I like meeting them in person and then just like having a conversation that revol- involves like some intellect or like saying something that actually has value, which I tend to do in real life. And uh then trick them into falling in love with me. It's happened mm-hmm. what happened with the last one. I, yeah. I think so. what's gonna happen is you're gonna meet someone. I would I I'm feeling sooner than later that's just gonna motivate you to just put down the lotion for good. And and it just clean you up. <laughs> I don't bring use you lotion. Home. I don't use lotion. <laughs> Dude, you got dry ass hands too. Yeah. What the? I yeah, know I that's should, strange. I should be using you lotion. You got some callus on there. Oh, you have no idea. Chief Wahoo's like prepared. He's rugged. <laughs> Bro, Chief. <laughs> He's like, he must be rugged, dog. Uh, Is he like prep for battle? Uh, <laughs> it's a layer what's, of armor. He, what's he wearing? Years of rub and wear. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, bro. You need I, sandpaper to just do the job from now on. 
<laughs> I, I jerk off with sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> I really think it's coming though. No pun intended. I think you're going to find someone who's going to really just just knock your socks off. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Just ride it out. I can be silent for a long just, time. I might download TikTok right now. Hope posting, we get this time. Posting a video <laughs> is committing to a decision. I thought that was interesting. Posting a video. It takes a lot of confidence, a lot of courage to just be like, yep, I'm committing to this. I'm sharing it with the entire world. Yeah. Yes, it does. But the longer you do it and the more you do it, that feeling will go away. Because you're right. Especially if you're new to this shit and you're you're grown. Like I had mm -hmm. the privilege of doing this when I was young. And so I got the permission to be bad. Yeah. And I, I see uh, young creators, like young, like 10 to 12 years old on YouTube making hot I mean, these videos suck, but right. But my <laughs> but videos, to them, they're awesome. Yeah, for sure. But my yeah. videos sucked. And so mm -hmm. it's cool to, I look at these videos. I'm like, ah, those were the, those are the glory days. Like you, mm -hmm. you have this time to learn and be bad and then grow up. And that, that anxiety that comes with posting. And even if you're not pressure? trying to be a creator, just did like you, anyone. When you, when you two were making vines <laughs> and you were coming up, did you guys have any pages that were like just throwing shade on people that made cringe vines? No, bro. There was no. Um, that, that's something that I think is interesting to <laughs> to discuss. It is. It you're absolutely because there was no Cody Co making fun of right. my cringe ass shit. Um, that's got to be a little more tough. It? There was kids. no H three H three. I think hadn't quite uh, come up yet. Drama alert. Uh, or yeah, I don't. I don't know where he was, but yeah. Now the creators like there's that extra wave of anxiety that passes beyond just the fans thinking you're cringe versus the community thinking you're cringe. Mm -hmm. And I actually don't know if it's such a bad thing. And I'll tell you why mm. these commentary creators almost force these TikTok stars to not take themselves so seriously and be as cringe. It's true. Which is good for mm. them because it forces them to grow up faster. Like my, my cringe shit stopped when I was t only like a year and a half Oh, uh, well, you think it's, you think it's, nah, my, my shit's not cringe anymore. I'll, 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 stuff. Nah, I'll put my foot down and say like, may, maybe like moments, yeah. but in general, like my shit isn't cringe. Um, <laughs> clip that, you motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're uh, going to pull up so much. Like, you're going to get a whole video. No, no, but it took, this. what I'm saying is it took it's me forever, enough. bro. I was 23 and a half years old before I was like, wait, that's whack. Yeah. So these kids are stopped. They're, they're becoming, likable and cooler earlier mm -hmm. they're for they're being forced to become a better creator here's why that sucks i don't know about y'all but cringe shit is the most fun thing to watch oh, it's phenomenal it's my favorite mm -hmm. i'll eat that shit up till 2 a.m that's why you gotta check bollywood out because oh. it, it, ta it takes it to a whole different level <laughs> Yeah, like that that those TikToks I played at the beginning, bro. Those are my favorites. It's phenomenal. Corona, Corona, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you too. Anyways, stay, hey, stay cringe. Like, um, give yeah, give me please. give me and 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 protect our cringe creators. Like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Cody, Cody and and Ethan. I don't know if Ethan does this anymore, but like Cody, let him let him go. Let him be. I need I need entertainment. Yeah, take it a little easy on him. We need more so content. They, so they keep going, right? Should yeah. people grow up too fast though? Like, should, should they? Not should they, but like, do you want them to? It's good to get out of the cringe content stage, but you have to go through that. You have to make cringe content before you realize what's good. I agree. I, like, I totally agree. There's, 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 there's some creators who are like, who have pretty much always been dope. David's actually one of them. David Dobrik. Mm -hmm. Like I, 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 one of his like videos from like three, four years ago, uh, popped up and it wasn't, it wasn't anywhere near the quality it's producing now, but like, he's always been like a, like a cool kit, a cool, mm -hmm. likable kit. Mm -hmm. A lot. I mean, <clears throat> I would assume maybe this is a reach, but I would assume most people like fall into who they are and that, that, that final form of themselves. And I've definitely had, uh, uh speaking personally, like quite the evolutionary arc mm -hmm. that I actually sort of prefer because I feel like I've, I've seen more and I experienced more and can relate to that cringe kid or the, mm -hmm. The kid who is is failing, or the kid who is on top, because he's cringe. Like there's there's those creators, right? Mm -hmm. Who have their numbers are huge, but like in real life, they're just kind of whack. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been there, so you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, how long have we been going, Danny? An hour and thirty seven minutes. An hour and thirty seven minutes. Yeah. Wow. 
It was a long time with the doc. All right, listen, guys. Go back, listen to that call with the doc. Uh, There's a good chance he may save your life. He saved my life. He also told me my my septum's deviated, and he's the one who will do surgery on me should I need it. Mm. Is that something with, like, your pee-pee? Septum, I said. Oh, In okay. the nose. I thought you said septic. Nope, that's that's like a tank that holds waste. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of Impulsive. Let us know what you think. Spencer, thanks for joining us. Be safe on that camping trip, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thanks watch, for having watch, me. Watch, watch out for bears, dude. Oh, shit. Bears. <laughs> you came to Yosemite with us, right? Yeah. You remember they got, we got kicked out because we didn't put the food in the bear crate? <laughs> yes, I do remember that. Yep. I'll watch out for bears. Yep. Thank you. Mac, keep growing the beard, I guess. I'll see, mm-hmm. you, see you after this podcast ends. Cool. Hit that subscribe button. We love you. Thank you for watching. Take it easy. Peace.